Good morning, student. I am Dr. Bhupendra Saha, Assistant Professor of Department of Internal Medicine, BP Koirala Institute of Health Sciences, Saran, Nepal. Today we'll discuss about aplastic anemia. This presentation is for six semester MBBS student. So, I don't think you can recognize this gentleman. He is Paul Elric, who, who was Nobel Prize winner. He was one of the famous hemato-oncologist. And he was the one who had termed aplastic anemia when he was reporting a case of pregnant lady who died because of bone marrow failure. So aplastic anemia is a syndrome of bone marrow failure, which is characterized by peripheral pancytopenia and marrow hypoplegia. Peripheral pancytopenia, you, I think you know, there is reduction of the all three cell lineage. There is reduction in the RBC, there is reduction in the WBC and there is reduction in the platelet. That is what we call the pancytopenia. And when we evaluate the bone marrow, then we see the bone marrow hypoplasia. So this condition is called the aplastic anemia. The epidemiology of this condition is, uh, you can see this chart where we can see like, like it is more in the male uh, population and the common age of the presentation is in between uh, 10 to 30. So it's a, it's a disease of the young adult, uh, though it can be seen in any uh, group of population. Uh, in our clinical experience, we see lots of adult patients with aplastic, <coughs> sorry, anemia, as well as we also see the aplastic anemia uh, in the elderly population. So uh, in my clinical experience, it has a bimodal uh, distribution. So the risk factors for the aplastic anemia are in the, in the acquired and the inherited. In the acquired uh, radiation exposure, if someone has a history of radiation exposure, then they, uh, they are more likely to have a this conditions, aplastic anemia. Chemical exposure, especially for the benzene, uh, exposure to the benzene compound can cause aplastic anemia. There are some drugs which can cause aplastic anemia like uh, allopurinol, uh, then NACID, uh, cyclosporin also can cause aplastic anemia. There are different types of chemotherapeutics that can cause the aplastic anemia. And the, regarding the infection, the, one of the important infection that can cause aplastic anemia is seronegative hepatitis. That is non-A, non-B and non-C hepatitis. Actually, we do not know what type of hepatitis is causing uh, this condition, but seronegative hepatitis is one of the important conditions that can precipitate, precipitate the aplastic anemia. Other infections that can precipitate aplastic anemia are Epstein-Barr virus infection, parvovirus infection, even in HIV we can see uh, the aplastic anemia. There are some immunological conditions which can cause aplastic anemia. Classical one is SLE, it can cause aplastic anemia. Similarly, in the pregnant lady, uh, in, in some of the pregnant lady, uh, there can be the bone marrow aplasia uh, causing the aplastic anemia. This is one of the conditions called paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria. In short form, it is also called PNS, uh, like uh, later on in the initial state, there is, a, there is a feature of the hemolytic anemia, but later on it can convert to the aplastic anemia. And in our clinical practice, like there are, there are like ample of, uh, example where we have missed the diagnosis of the uh, PNS and we have labeled uh, the patient with aplastic anemia as PNS. Uh, that's why we have to also think about the PNS as one of the cause of the aplastic anemia. And sometimes in our clinical practice, very difficult to exactly identify the etiology of aplastic anemia. We coined that condition as well, idiopathic aplastic anemia. There are some inherited conditions like Fanconi anemia, dyskeratosis uh, congenita, 
uh, Swazman Black Hand Syndrome, uh, and there is some like telomerase uh, conditions, uh, telomere, uh, telomeropathies, uh, like uh, the recent terminology has given. This can cause a plastic anemia. So the first picture is about uh, the Fanconi anemia. In the Fanconi anemia, there are like there, is, there can be microcephaly, there can be the facial abnormalities, as well as the classical uh, pattern of the uh, this Fanconi anemia is like there are thumb abnormality, and there are like uh, radial hypoplasia uh, can occur in Fanconi anemia. So why I am showing this picture you uh, to you people is that. This can be one of the MCQ question uh, in, your career, in, your, in your career, like when you are giving the MD in trans, like when you are giving preparing for the exam. Even uh, you should not forget to check at least for the limb deformities if you are diagnosing a patient with a plastic anemia. Second condition is dyskeratosis congenita. You can see that this dyskeratotic nail here, uh, yes, okay, you can get lycoplakia and hyperkeratosis of the skins of the nape of the neck. So uh, these are the clues for the congenital cause or initiated for cause for the aplastic anemia. Okay. Now clinical feature. So as we have already discussed in aplastic anemia, there is decrease in all three cell lineage. But interestingly, bleeding is the commonest presentation. Uh, often in our clinics, a patient present with a history of uh, gum bleeding, patient can present with a history of bleeding while processing. They can give the history of petechiae, they can give the history of excessive menstrual blood flow. These are the usual presentation of the aplastic anemia patient. And second is the, they can have also a feature of anemia like fatigability, exosonal palpitation, exosonal shortness of breath, tinnitus, they can have. Though we expect there should be an infection, but infection is not a, a, like the uh, or, like or less presentation of the aplastic anemia. Infection is more prone in, uh, of, uh, like more prone in a patient with agranulocytosis. So, what should, what is the clinical piece? What is the dictum? The dictum is that everything is okay in the adult population, and if we check uh, the uh, uh, blood parameters, and if there is decrease in cell lineage, like uh, like uh, apparently healthy uh, adult with uh, or decrease in all cell cell lineage, then we have to think of the aplastic anemia as one of the possibility. Uh, we, when you examine the patient, we can see the petechiae and the pallor, but uh, these are the, if we find uh, lymphadenopathy or splenomegaly and weight loss, then we should always think of the alternative diagnosis. So these are not common. So we often ask uh, our student, so what is the uh, size of the spleen if you suspect the aplastic anemia? And then the uh, spleen is usually normal. So if the spleen is normal and if there is a decrease in all cell lineage, then we have to think of the aplastic anemia. If the spleen is enlarged, then there are other causes of the encytopenia like uh, different uh, leukemias or sometimes hyperspleenism like that. Okay? The spleen should be normal in a patient with aplastic anemia. In the lab studies, you can do any test, but uh, the to like the test that give us clue for the diagnosis of the plastic anemia is uh, like when you do the full blood uh, count analysis, there were decrease in hemoglobin level, there is decrease in WBC level, and there is decrease in fat death level. When you do the reticulocyte count, then there were decrease in the reticulocyte count level. So, but the D definitive. Test to diagnose aplastic anemia is bone marrow aspiration and the biopsy. When you are doing the bone marrow aspiration, it's very easy to get the sample sometimes, but it's usually the diluted samples. Uh, when you do the bone marrow biopsy, uh, like you can see in this picture, this uh, this one is the like the uh, the actual the bone marrow biopsy finding of the aplastic anemia, where the bone marrow space is like infiltrated with the fat tissue. These are the fats. Uh, fats and there are only few few cell uh, cells. Like this is the normal. Uh, this is the normal bone marrow biopsy findings. There are so many cells here. Uh, so uh, definitely, the finding of the plastic anemia in the bone marrow is there is the fat accumulation in the bone marrow. Uh, normally, uh, like what should be the cellular level of the bone marrow? Is that we have to subtract your age from 100. Like if we are 30 years, then 100 minus 30 is 70. Then in the bone marrow space, 70% uh, should be the cells and only 30% should be fat. But if you are getting predominantly fat in the bone marrow, then definitely we can make a diagnosis of the aplastic anemia. 
there are some supportive test we are which we are supposed to do we should always we should always do hepatitis b hepatitis c and hiv serology analysis uh, sometimes we have to also do the work of for the autoimmune disease like uh, ane and sometimes we have to also do the flow cytometry to rule out the pns so diagnosis is the pancytopenia plus fatty bone marrow is the is the is is the criteria to diagnose the aplastic anemia so the treatment the the treatment that the definitive treatment is hematopoietic stem cell transplantation uh, for that uh, this is stem cell transplantation of uh, in a young adult and if they have a like uh, appropriate donor available if everything is matched then it's is uh, it's a first line treatment for the aplastic anemia it's a definitive treatment for aplastic anemia so it should always recommend our patient especially in the young adult uh, pa patient to uh, undergo the hematopoietic stem cell transplantation this facility is available in some of the centers in nepal and it's rampant available in uh, different centers in india so you have to recommend your patient to go with this treatment modalities but if we, if someone has the difficulty uh, to undergo the stem cell transplantation because of uh, the non availability of the donor then the, we have to use the immunosuppressives the immunosuppressives of choice is anti thymocyte globulin plus cyclosporin i don't think you, uh, you people require the dose and the regime it's complicated for the ambiguous student just know you have to give the anti thymocyte globulin plus cyclosporin there are some of the centers where they have only tried with the cyclosporin uh, and the result is good but we always recommend to treat the patient with aplastic anemia with anti thymocyte globulin plus cyclosporin therapy and it will work especially in the, even in the young adult this is the picture how you, how people do the bone marrow transplantation we have they, they take out the marrow from the healthy donors and the mass donors and they processed and they ultimately like uh, transfuse that marrow to the patient uh these are wrong this is the anti thymocyte globulin and second one cyclosporin we have to give the combination of these molecules to a patient with aplastic anemia the supportive care we should never forget because most of our, most of uh, the patient in our centers we do the supportive cares if they have a infection like which are which is not the early or early presentation but if they can have infection then we have to treat them with a pre broad spectrum antibiotics we should not wait for the culture report just give the broad spectrum antibiotics and do and wait for the culture report and the, we have to transfuse the periodic hemoglobin transfusion like periodic we have to we have to transfuse the patient with packed cell volumes and the recommendation uh, dose and the duration is we have to transfuse two unit every two week um, two weekly to keep hemoglobin level of 7 gram per deciliter and if someone has the respiratory cardio compromise we have to keep the hemoglobin level more than 9 gram per deciliter and we have to keep the platelet count uh, more than 10000 so we have to transfuse the platelet accordingly so i think this is the end of this presentation so a plastic anemia is the term coined by the paul elric is the condition where there is a pancytopenia with bone marrow hypoplasia uh, it is it has inherited and acquired cause uh, so we have to know the causes of a plastic anemia the common presentation is the bleeding and the feature of the anemia uh, the test that we are supposed to do is that we have to, we, we have to do the uh, CBC where you get a little bit decrease in hemoglobin, TLC and the platelet. Uh, definitely we have to do the bone marrow where you see the fatty metals. Treatment of choice is the bone marrow transplantation which will uh, uh, vary nicely in the adult populations and alternatively we can use the combination of the ATG antithymocyte globulin with cyclosporin and these are the supportive tests. Thank you. Thank you so much for your kind attention if you have any problems any comment any queries i'm happy to answer it okay uh, stay safe and bye bye